it's a, a great uh, pleasure for me to participate in this symposium. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry, uh, my English is not good. Uh, so uh, I'll just uh, uh, read the, the PowerPoint. Neither is our Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that uh, the global environmental crisis is uh, one of the symptoms of modality. Uh, in other words, it is a crisis caused by modern Western civilization. Uh, uh, to use the method of analysis of culture or cultural analysis, uh, we might clearly know why modern Western civilization has caused global ecological crisis, or that uh, the, uh, modern Western civilization is not sus uh, sustainable. I think a culture or civilization basically has three dimensions. One, material objects, including the uh, mobile or television, uh, 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 television set, cars, and etc. And two, uh, institutions, uh, three, ideas and uh, values. Now, let's look at uh, the modern Western civilization. Its material objects is or are industrial products produced by machines or machine or a system of machines using mineral fuels and uh, resources. And I think uh, that cars are the typical products used by modern people. And, and both the production and the consumption is uh, uh, is anti-ecology or anti-natural, uh, and it uh, always uh, pollute the environment. And uh, its institutions mainly are capitalism and uh, democracy. And the ideas and values is um, are physicalism, scientism, liberalism, utilitarianism, or economy, uh, economism. And uh, uh, now I think that um, materialism is the mainstream of the uh, values in uh, I think it's all over the world, especially in China today. So generally speaking, the whole modern civilization is anti-ecological, and the global ecological crisis is the result of the global expansion of modern civilization. So from a point of view of college, or from a point of view of Confucianism, we can definitely judge that uh, modern civilization with mass production, mass consumption, and mass wastes is unsustainable. <coughs> so by comparing to ancient Chinese civilization, we can know more clearly why modern civilization is unsustainable. Let's look at the ancient Chinese civilization. So its material objects are mainly local agricultural products produced by plants and animals through photosynthesis with help from human and uh, creatures and uh, new chemical fertilizer and uh, pesticide are used. And, uh, uh, the solar energy is the uh, main energy for the Chinese 
uh, production of material objects. So uh, it, it, it is uh, obvious that uh, uh, it is obvious that uh, sooner energy is the most clean energy. And the institutions of uh, Asian China is quite complicated. I, I think the, uh, uh, it is the hierarchy with emperor in the top, but scholars are consist of leading class largely. And the fundamental principle of promoting agriculture and uh, restraining commercial business is consistently the guidance of the construct and the reformation of social institutions. I think uh, this point is very important that the scholars are the leading class in ancient China. It's not the commercial needs, it's a um, needs of uh, scholars who uh, are the leading class of Asian China. And uh, the, uh, in, I think the, uh, to restraining the commercial business is also very important for the Asian uh, Chinese civilization. And the ideas and the values are mainly Confucianism with Taoism and Buddhism as complement. But both but, uh, uh, Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism are all uh, very uh, friendly to uh, natural uh, environments. So I think that Confucianism is quite ecological. So my point of view is both Confucian and uh, ecological. So from the perspective of econo uh, ecology, ancient Chinese civilization is uh, good, while modern civilization is bad, because the nature is not sustainable. But uh, since the failure of Sino-British Opium War, Chinese in general and Chinese intellectuals in particular gradually lost their faith in their own civilization and uh, tradition. People think that China has to learn thoroughly from Western and has to change every dimension of the old civilization to survive. Since then, modernity has gradually become the most popular idea, ideology or most strong ideology in China. Many intellectuals are like Chen Du Xiu and uh, Lu Xun, uh, are very famous intellectuals uh, in the uh, last century. They think that only when we abandon, abandon the ancient tradition of China firmly can we make modernization in China smoothly. And uh, many intellectuals in today's China still think so. And the communist, uh, Chinese Communist Party accepts the basic goals of modernity Though its guiding principles is Marxism, not liberalism. And Marxism, I think, is an alternative of modality. And modernization is a basic ideal to change China. And the Chinese Communist Party accepts this ideal without any doubt and hesitation. So the great revolution of China, uh, our culture, launched by Mao was a radical effort to change Chinese culture or civilization according to Marxism. And Mao's cultural ideas 
but the efficiency was not so good as expected. Since 1978, modernization and also westernization in some degree have been rapidly developed with the growing of market economy. And today, there are more and more cars, trains, airplanes, and factories in China. In cities, there are TV sets, refrigerators, washing machines, air conditions, in almost every family. And the cities are getting larger and larger, and more and more new cities or towns have appeared. But the environment is polluted very heavily, and the health of ecosystems is getting worse and worse. So it is called development, and it is even called scientific development. And it, it is also the development of westernization. But I think this kind of development is definitely unsustainable in China, just as it is in other countries. Fortunately, some people in China have realized that we cannot develop like this anymore. And the leaders of Chinese Communist Party began to call on people to construct ecological civilization since 2007. Now, more and more intellectuals realize that ancient Chinese civilization is not as bad as Chen Duxiu, Hu Shi, and Lu Xun had judged in the beginning of the 20th century. Actually, ancient Chinese civilization is a kind of ecological civilization. We cannot, of course, go back to ancient civilization. But I think we can learn a lot from our ancestors when we try to construct a new eco-civilization in the future. A new eco-civilization will also inherit inherit good elements from modern Western civilization. We have to admit that ideas about uh, ecological civilization are not yet the mainstream ideas in today's China. Actually, the majority of Chinese just begin to enjoy all kinds of goods from modernization and uh, westernization, for instance, for instance, enjoy driving cars, enjoy the cool made by air conditions, uh, enjoy Hollywood movies, and even enjoy the funds to spend some Western uh, festivals, for, for instance, uh, uh, Christmas. <laughs> Among those who think that uh, Environment should be protected. There is no consensus about what ecological civilization is. Roughly, there are two definitions of ecological civilization. One defines ecological civilization as enlightened behaviors and rational social systems to protect environments. This is a main understanding about uh, uh, ecological civilization in today's China. Another defines ecological civilization as a completely new civilization in the whole history of humankind. So the key, the, the, the key difference is focused on the faith in modality or modernization. Those accepting the first definition have not lost their faith in modality and uh, they think that problems of pollution can be solved easily by innovation of science and technology. Those accepting the second think that modality is essentially false and humankind can live safely in the earth only when modern civilization is, is overcome. I think that 
Ecological civilization is the only choice for humankind in the future. And uh, I, I uh, uh, and accept the second definition of eco-civilization. So still, I'm belonging to the minority in China today. <coughs> with new science, uh, with new sciences such as ecology and new physics and uh, recent uh, uh, philosophical studies, we can criticize both modality and ancient Confucianism and try to make some ideas clear which can guide the construction of ecological civilization. I think that uh, the ecological civiliz the civilization should be like this. Uh, its material objects should be products produced by ecological culture, crafts, and the green industry. And uh, its institutions should be the market economy ruled by ecology, the rule of law, and uh, democracy. The ideas and values should be, uh, I think it should, uh, uh, should be transcendental naturalism. And, uh, and uh, the plural philosophies or religions beyond materialism. I think that agriculture should be the foundation of human economy in ecological civilization. I'm not sure whether we can have a real green industry if industry should be defined as a system of mass production. The key of the construction of institution for ecological civilization is to use ecology instead of logic or capital as a guidance. Only then can the institutions refrain people's greed. I think it is impossible to unify all people's faith in the world. So as John Ross, uh, uh, John, uh, as John Ross says that uh, reasonable pluralism will be the permanent condition uh, in uh, uh, under the conditions of democracy, and because nobody can prove that there is only one system of truth and uh, any beliefs conflicted with it are false. But uh, we can prove that physicalism, scientism, and material, uh, materialism are ridiculous. Only when we abandon physicalism can it be possible for us to realize that nature is indeed related to the creation of unpredictable novelty, where the possible is richer than the real. This is a quotation from a famous scientist. I, I cannot pronounce his name in English. I, I, I know his uh, 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 name in, in Chinese. Uh, then it is possible for us to revere for nature. When we begin to revere for nature, we will naturally respect the integrity, stability, and the beauty of the earth. If you still believe in scientism, you won't believe that there is any serious crisis in modern civilization. We can find believers of scientism easily in today's China. So the second definition of eco-civilization will be resisted, uh, resisted for a long time. Those believing in scientism usually reject non-anthropocentrism and think that it is ridiculous or stupid to prove that non-human things, including animals, plants, and ecosystems, have any intrinsic value. Maybe it is impossible to make all people abandon axiological materialism, but we have to try our best to dispel it from the gui guiding ideas of the construction and the reformation of institutions. It can be proved to be ridiculous easily from any perspectives of transcendental philosophies and religions, but it is still 
spread every day all over the world through the media. So only when the majority of people in the society realize that uh, axiological materialism is ridiculous can they begin to sp uh, spend more of their time and energy to do many kinds of meaningful things beyond uh, making and uh, spending money. And uh, mass production, mass consumption, and uh, mass wastes can be held back. Then the health of ecosystems can be protected effectively. Only when people reject physicalism, scientism, and materialism can they realize that modern industrial civilization with mass production, mass consumption, and mass waste is unsustainable. And uh, ecological civilization is the only way to go for humankind in the future. I think that uh, Christians Buddhists, Confucians, and other believers who have rejected physicalism, scientism, and materialism will all agree to choose eco-civilization. Thank you very much. And